acknowledging that we are on the traditional and unceded territories of the Lokungan speaking peoples, um, particularly the Sanjis and Esquimalt First Nations, and are very grateful for these traditional keepers of this land. And we look to them to support us in doing our work in a good way. To start with our case updates, we have uh, 42 new cases uh, who have tested positive today um, for a total of uh, 659 in British Columbia right now. Uh, by Health Authority, that is 339 in Vancouver Coastal Health, 218 in Fraser Health, 47 on Vancouver Island, 46 in Interior Health Authority, and 9 in the Northern Health Authority. We have one additional long-term care home in the Vancouver Coastal Health Region where one healthcare worker has been uh, detected with COVID-19 and that is the Broadway Pentecostal Lodge in Vancouver. Um, in terms of the, the long-term care homes, uh, we have no additional cases today at the Lynn Valley Care Centre, though unfortunately we do have one additional death from that outbreak. Uh, Hollyburn and uh, Delta View, the German Canadian House, Dufferin uh, uh, Care Centre, Little Mountain Long Term Care, and Evergreen Heights, which we've reported on, have had no change in the number of residents or staff affected at this point. Um, but there has been an increase at Harrow Park, where we now have 28 residents and 27 staff who have been affected by uh, COVID 19. Currently, there are 64 people hospitalized in British Columbia, and of those, 26 are in intensive care unit today. On the positive side, we now have 183 people who have fully recovered from COVID-19 in BC. As mentioned yesterday, uh, the coroner's office is investigating the death of a dentist to determine if this death was related to COVID-19. And I want to express uh, again my condolences and my thoughts to his family, who I know are, um, have been extremely affected by this and it has been a very challenging few days for them. I want to say that the coroner's investigation is ongoing and I do not have any further details to report at this point. So we have, um, as we know, uh, yesterday I was also asked for information on uh, healthcare workers specifically and whether we had a breakdown of healthcare workers who have been affected by this. And i uh, looking right now, I do not have the exact numbers of, of healthcare workers um, unless they're related to the clusters, particularly the clusters in long-term care or in hospital that we've that we've had. Um, so we have those nine uh, long-term care facility outbreaks and we've had the one hospital. Um, and of those, we now have, we have 55 healthcare workers who are affected from those outbreaks. For most of the other healthcare workers who have been involved in these, uh, uh, who have been tested positive, their exposures have been more in the community and so they have not been um, identified. For example, the number of dentists that we've had are also healthcare workers, but their exposures have not been in the workplace. But we do, I mean, it does draw attention again to the, the, the fragility of our long-term care facilities and the, the risk that we put the residents of long-term care. Um, um, and that is why we have put on some very strong measures, not only for the facilities where there have been outbreaks, but doing everything we can to try and protect our elders and seniors in those long-term care homes around the province. And I talked yesterday about um, the order that we're developing that will help ensure that healthcare workers are able to work at one facility only, particularly during this critical time to best protect um, our elders and seniors in these facilities. As well, there are additional measures in the outbreak facilities around personal protective equipment, restriction of visitors, and restriction of visitors in all of our, our long-term care homes across the province. And I know this is incredibly challenging, particularly when it's our loved one who's in one of these facilities. And I know staff are going out of their way to try to find ways to keep you connected with your loved ones, and we will continue to do that. We have been, as you know, uh, we've talked about this many times, actively monitoring our supplies of personal protective equipment, recognizing that the protection of our healthcare workers and our healthcare systems is of paramount importance in this outbreak. In the past week, we have seen a dramatic increase in use as we've had more people with COVID-19 in hospital, and we understand the, the absolute need to keep people safe. 
but the burn rate, as we call it, is much higher than we would have expected, and we are putting in place measures now to try and, and control that and be more efficient and effective in how we're using PPE. We have new shipments on order. We're looking at things like uh, alternative supplies across the board, alternative ways of preserving um, personal protective equipment so it is available both now and in the future. And we're at a bit of a critical phase with personal protective equipment. This happened quite quickly. We have had a number of supplies on order for some time. Some have arrived, thankfully, and we are actively looking at how we can get as much as we can in the short term. But we are looking at alternative supplies and ways of managing to be more efficient in PPE, and more of that will come um, out over the next coming days. Finally, I, I did want to talk about, about public gatherings, which is something that we've talked about a, a little bit over the last couple of weeks. And as uh, people are aware, I have given an order prohibiting gatherings larger than 50 people. And we talk about 50 people, and initially there's no science behind that. It's, a, it's around what's been done in other places, what is sort of a manageable, uh, reasonable number of people where you can maintain distance with that number of people. But this is not an order of convenience. This is, this is something that is required to protect people. And, and we know that 50 is not an absolute number. It is the, the maximum, but we know smaller is better. And we really, at this point in time, particularly in the next two weeks, as we're trying to, to delay the onset, prevent the transmission of this virus, we need um, to continue to, to not meet in groups, even groups of 10, even groups of 20, small groups, even two or three can sometimes be that transmission point. So we're, we're not talking about workplaces and, and areas where people live where you can put in place measures to try and, and, in, in, and increase separation. But we're talking about gatherings, about having people over to your home, about um, gathering together in the park. These are things that right now we can't be doing. We need to connect virtually. We need to have a safe space between us for the next little while. And that includes um, and that includes celebrations and ceremonies. I recognize when we're in a crisis, when communities are in crises, having celebrations, having ceremonies is our way of helping to cope, helping to understand what's going on with these, uh, with these uh, critical times. But they are also times when we may expose those who are most vulnerable in our community, our elders, our seniors, people who have um, are more at risk because of their underlying medical conditions. And I am asking you right now, the leaders in our community, the, our faith leaders, our spiritual leaders, um, our community leaders, that we need to come together virtually to protect those in our communities over the coming weeks. And that means that we need to find alternate ways of coming together and sharing the information, the support, the connectivity that we have as a community without being physically together. So again, it's talking about physical distance and social connection. It is very important right now that we come together in our communities and support each other, but we do that in a virtual way and we have a safe space between us to stop the transmission of this virus. So I've said it many, many times, there are things that we do to support ourselves in this community and we, we have to be kind, we have to be calm, and we have to continue to be safe. Thank you.